transfer programs are widespread in the developing world, and DFID estimates that there are about a billion beneficiaries worldwide. The evidence, by and large, shows very effective um, interventions in terms of improving food security and reducing poverty, but there are actually very limited effects, and where there are effects, they're quite mixed on nutrition. And this prompts the question, is it that resources are not the only constraint in terms of improving nutrition? Could it be that perhaps you need something else, like information um, on how to use resources effectively for improving nutrition? And so that was in part the motivation for the Transfer Modality Research Initiative, or TMRI, in Bangladesh. Um, this was a collaboration between WFP Bangladesh and IFBRI. And this project was a pilot program that was designed using a randomized control trial for impact evaluation. Um, and it randomized women with very young children into um, receiving either food or cash with or without very intensive um, nutrition behavior change communication, or BCC. And this was quite unique in that no other study that we're aware of had used the same transfer and done it with and without the BCC to really isolate the effect of this component. And so what we found in a nutshell was that all of the transfer modalities improved food security, improved incomes but only the combination of cash with BCC reduced stunting. And the reduction was actually quite striking. It was a seven percentage point reduction, which is three times the national average decline over the same period in Bangladesh. Um, and notably, the cash transfer alone had no significant impact on stunting. So that really indicates that the plus BCC is really important, and you really need the combination of both the resource constraint being alleviated and the BCC. Now this has had quite a lot of influence because of the role of stunting in um, kind of predicting future paths, lifelong consequences. Um, the influence has been both at the kind of global level. We've had a lot of interest from policy and research sides globally. It has also actually influenced policy at scale in Bangladesh. So based on extensive discussions between Dr. Ahmed and his team in Dhaka with government, the Ministry of Win uh, Women and Children Affairs in Dhaka has actually um, introduced a nutrition behavior change communication component into its um, largest social protection program for rural women in Bangladesh, and that is called the Vulnerable Group Development, VGD. So we're very happy that the research in this case has had such, um, such clear influence on policy, both um, in the country itself and globally. There have also been a lot of other very interesting findings from this work. Um, one question in the literature has been transfer programs, many people worry that when they're targeted to women may introduce conflict within the household. So particularly that there may be some backlash um, where men try to either um, kind of reassert their authority by um, perpetrating violence against women or that they try to take control over resources from women um, that they've received through the transfer. So this has been a great concern the evidence actually shows the opposite by and large, that transfers reduce intimate partner violence. Um, and some work before the Bangladesh study had shown that it doesn't matter whether you provide food or cash or food vouchers, um, the reductions, at least in one context, in the context of a study in Ecuador, all of those interventions actually reduce violence against women. Um, both because women are empowered by the transfer and therefore they have more bargaining power to kind of assert not accepting violence and because the reduction in poverty from the transfer reduces stress and associated conflict within the household. One thing that the research has not been able to address is what happens after those transfers end. And because um, transfer programs don't continue indefinitely, that's a really important question. Um, with regard to the sustainability of these interventions. On the one hand, they're very promising because IPV, intimate partner violence, is a global phenomenon with one in three women affected. 
On the other hand, if everything ends once the transfer ends, then you can't really use this as the scalable solution. So in Bangladesh, we went back six to 10 months after the program had ended and collected information on intimate partner violence. And what we found was that transfers only six to 10 months after the program ended had no effects on violence compared to a group that had received nothing but only the groups that had received some sort of transfer along with behavior change communication um, showed significant reductions in violence. Um, and these were in the range of about 24% reductions. Um, and the mechanisms that we find are both related to the previous findings and kind of bring a new light to um, how this can operate through transfer programs. So we do find similar effects that women are empowered through these BCC programs over and above just transfers only. Um, because women in Bangladesh are very secluded, um, at least in rural areas, female seclusion still prevails. And um, because they have very little control over resources within their household, the combination of the transfers and being brought into kind of the intensive group-based trainings that the BCC introduced really increased their social capital and their social status. And in the literature, this has been linked to um, increased women's empowerment as well as um, kind of increased social control on men's behavior. So basically, the idea that women are more visible in public reduces, um, it kind of increases the visibility of any violence they perpetrate. Um, another mechanism that could be going on is that the BCC actually increased the um, reductions in poverty that came from the transfer, and so the reductions in stress may have also been larger. So what we find there is basically that, you know, just, trans just targeting transfers to women, although it may be empowering in some way, it may not be a sustainable reduction on its own, and you sort of need to do something that will lead to sustained improvements in women's status. In the case of Bangladesh, this introduction of the behavior change communication really seemed to serve that purpose by mainly, we think, increasing women's social status and social capital. So we now know that social protection can be very effective in improving food security and reducing poverty. We also have some evidence that can, it, it can be a very effective platform for other objectives, um, particularly when linked to complementary activities. We have evidence from some of our studies that linking social protection to nutrition sensitive activities can lead to effects on nutrition when transfers alone don't do it. We've found that um, linking transfers to um, activities that engage women can have effects on intimate partner violence and other dynamics related to gender when transfers alone may not necessarily have sustained effects on those things. And so there is a role for thinking more carefully about so how social protection, which reaches um, a large part of the developing world, can be used as the platform to scalably achieve other objectives.